Behind me here is the EcoWorthy dual access solar tracking system. I've had this unit in operation for the last few months now and has been working flawlessly. It's really helped me take advantage of the little bit of sun that I do get out here in the woods. The programming was a little tricky, so I wanted to show you how to do that today. Let's get started. When you get this post set up and wired, the very first thing you need to do in the programming is to make sure that everything is operating in the direction that it should be. To do that, you hit the set button with a short press, and then you have your manual operation buttons, the north, east, south, and west. Go ahead and press the east button and make sure that the unit is turning and facing the east. Press the west button, make sure it is facing the west, and do the same with north and south, making sure that everything is operating in the direction that is supposed to. This is also a good time to check the full range of the unit, make sure nothing's in the way, no wires are getting pulled tight. Go ahead and run it all the way through the north, south, east, and west positions. My unit right from the factory had the east and west wires backwards, and it cost me about an hour of troubleshooting. When I mounted the sensor, it kept going the wrong direction, and if I would have checked this first, it would have saved me a lot of trouble. So make sure everything is operating in the direction that it should be. The next thing that we're going to go over is the nighttime return, resting state, or low light position of the unit. What happens is if this unit doesn't see the sun for the program set amount of time, it will actually return to the optimal position to pick it back up again. Same thing at night. When it is not picking up the sun, it returns to this position so that it has the ch best chance of finding it when the sun comes back out in the morning. A couple things that you're going to need to have for this stage of the programming is a timer. And I think it's a great idea to know the optimal angle for solar panels in your area. Get those couple things together and I'll show you how to program that. So now we want to start with the unit in the full west position. So go ahead and move it to there by short pressing the set button, pressing the west button until you're in the full west position. Now go ahead and start your timer and we're gonna move it to the full east position. Start your timer now. Now go ahead and write down that time. You're going to need that for the programming of the unit. Now we're going to do the now we're going to take it back to the position that we want it to be in when it's in its resting state. So you'll go ahead and start your timer and take it back to the west until you where it's where you want it to be, which for me is about level. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. Start your timer. And go ahead and write that time down. Now we're going to do the same thing with the north and south. We're going to go ahead and start in the furthest south position. So go ahead and move your unit to that. Once you're in the furthest south position, go ahead and start your timer. We're going to take it all the way to the north. And start. Go ahead and stop your timer, write down that time. You're gonna need that for later. Now we're gonna take it to the south, to the position that you want it to rest in. So that'll be the optimal angle for your area. So go ahead and start your timer. Well, figure out what the angle is gonna be. Start your timer and get it to that angle. And then we'll stop that timer, write that down. So go ahead and start timer.
And mine's going to rest right there. I'm going to go ahead and write down that time so that we can go into the next stage of programming. So you should have four times written down the time it takes to go from the furthest west position to the furthest east position and then back from the east position to where you want it to rest and then from the furthest south position to the furthest north position and then back to your resting state in the south position. Once you have those four times, we can go into the prog programming on the controller and program that in. To enter the settings menu of the system, you're going to long press the set button. You'll see that move into the settings menu. You use the east and west buttons to move through the setting items, and then your north and south buttons to change those items. So we're going to be going into the T8, T9, T10, T11, and T12 settings for the low light return. So we're going to go ahead and toggle up until you see we're T4, T5, T6, T7. We're going to T8. And that is the delay. So if the unit does not see the sun for this set amount of time, it will return to the position that you set. Mine is set at 1,800 seconds. Everything in this unit is in seconds. And so 1,800 seconds is a half an hour. If the sun doesn't come out for a half an hour, it does, it's behind the clouds or whatever, it will return to the position that I set. Now we'll move into the T9. This is the time that you wrote down for it to move all the way from the west all the way back to the east. You can fudge that by a couple of seconds. Um, it's okay if it pauses on the other side. Mine took about 32 seconds to move and I programmed it to 35. It'll just pause for a few seconds. Now you're going to go into T10, which is from your east back to the position that you want it to be resting at. And that's the critical time that you're going to enter in there, or the time that you wrote down. Mine took 15 seconds to get back where I wanted it to be. Now this is the T11 setting, which is the from the furthest south to the furthest north position. You'll enter that time. I added a couple seconds to it as well. And then our last setting is going to be the T12 setting, which is the return to the angle that you want it to be at. Mine is set at 13 seconds, as you can see here. Once you have all those settings programmed in, that's what you need for the low light return. You can go ahead and press the quit button that takes you back to the main menu and saves it. Once you've programmed the resting state or the low light position of the unit, it's really easy to program it for the high wind setting. This unit right down here will detect the wind. And if the wind is at a certain amount preset in the controller, you can change it, but I would not recommend that. Go ahead and leave the, the factory setting for the wind speed sensor. You're going to go ahead and go into your T3, T4, T5 and T6 settings, and that's going to be the same settings as what you just put in for the low light return, except on the last position, the, the to the south position, you're just going to put zero. That will leave the unit in a flat position so that if the wind picks up and is blowing hard, it's not going to cause damage to your solar panels or the solar tracker. Well, those are the main settings that need to be checked and set up by the end user. This really has been a great tracker, been a game changer for me out here in the woods. I only get four to five hours of direct sunlight a day and it's really helped me make the most of it. My batteries are now topped off before I lose the sunlight. If you're interested in one, there's a link down in the description below. I really just hope that if you purchase one of these systems, that this video helps make it easier for you to program and set up the tracker than it was for me. Thanks for watching.